We're bringing it really slow down here for Alex. And now you're giving it power, then nose down, right? When, you want to, uh... when I want to recover, yeah, I'm bumping the angle of attack down. Welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James, and today we're going to be showing you how to set up the thrust vectoring unit, which is optional on the Yas39 Gripen uh, on a Spectrum radio. We are going to be using a DX9 for the purpose of this video, but I have this one plugged in. This is how you've seen it fly now. This is how we've been flying it. Um, so I'm going to show you four mixes today, and this is going to piggyback off of the canard mixing video. So we're going to take it from the point where you already have your canards working as they should, where when you turn left, you get left when you turn right you get a right roll where your canards act oppositely and then in the pitch your canards work opposite of the elevons in both pitch uh, up and down as you can see but now what we're going to do is show you that we put it on a switch that day so you can take off and land as you can see everything happens here um without anything happening let me just make sure all right throttle cut is on and um you see everything working now when we flip the h switch in the back that's how we set it up you will see now that you get your thrust vectoring. So what we did is uh, the thrust vectoring unit has two servos. So really all it takes is two mixes to get your thrust vectoring working in the pitch. That is mixing it to the elevator and then in the yaw where you mix it to the rudder. But then we're gonna show you two more mixes because uh, Justin Lamb, who uh, was kind enough to come out fly with us, uh, after he flew it once or twice, he said, I wanna add a little bit in the aileron as well. So you'll see here that we also added both the rudder and the thrust vectoring yaw into our aileron. So that took two more mixes because you have to mix the aileron to both the rudder on a separate mix, and then you have to mix it to the yaw on the, uh, on the um, thrust vectoring unit as well. So as far as this video is concerned, if you remember going back to my canard video, I put both canards in aux two and aux three ports of the uh, 10 channel Admiral Stability Plus gyro. That leaves me two more free channels for the DX9 because this takes nine channels in total to get your thrust vectoring set up. So I've plugged the yaw is now plugged into aux one, which would normally be the flaps and I have the pitch on the thrust vectoring unit plugged into aux 5. So what you're about to see is going to be from that point. So let me just unbind it from this model. I have a new model set up where we don't have those mixes in place, and then we'll show you how to get it set up. All right, guys, as you can see in my model, I've set up the Yas39 Gripen. I made a copy. All I did was copy the file that you just saw me using, and I deleted out all the mixes that were already there. So as you can see, if I move around my sticks, I still have my canard mixing um, set up. So I'm using just the seven channels. And as I told you now, I've plugged in the yaw of the thrust vectoring into my flat channel. And I plugged in the pitch of my uh, thrust vectoring into the aux five. So the first things first you wanna do, if you notice right now on the Gripen itself, that um, you might do this when you plug in your thrust vectoring uh, initially, you might see that it's not center. Before you bother uh, playing with the ball links yet to uh, center it out, what you want to do, like we did for the canard mixing video, is you want to go into your channel assignments first. So you'll see here we are in our uh, page. We got to back out in order to do that. So we go to system setup. We got to leave. So it's going to unbind your aircraft. And you want to go to the channel assignments page right here. Now what that's gonna do is, with all Spectrum radios at least, like DX9, you see we got nine channels in your port assignments. What you wanna do is inhibit it like I did. So remember, as I said in my original uh, video for the canard mixing, we had to inhibit aux two and aux three because that's where my canards were plugged into. But based on uh, the fact that I need nine channels, the DX9 has nine channels, I'm using aux one, which is not available to you. That's because normally that would be your flaps. So you don't have to do anything with that, but you wanna go to, over to aux nine, because if you notice, it's on the roller on the back left here. So when I roll it, you can see, well, right now we're not bound up, but that would move the elevator servo there. But what you wanna do is inhibit that. So rack that all the way back 
to inhibit it. Now watch what happens when we back out. This is going to rebind the aircraft. And you can see that we are now uh, ready for the uh, thrust vectoring. So nothing is going to move those two servos normally because I don't have a flap setting on this. So we're not going to worry about that. But now at this point, if your thrust vectoring unit is not centered, you can go ahead and center those ball links right now to make sure that your your thrust is going to be uh, dead center when you're in this position. So if you want to do that now, go ahead and do that. Or you could just do it at the end after you do your mixes. It is up to you. So now let's get started with the mixes. So where are you going to go? Your first page is going to be into the mixing. Now, as I said, you can see here we have our four original mixes. Uh, two for the aileron into both canards in aux 2 and aux 3 and two for the elevator into both canards aux 2 and aux 3 that helps in the roll and in the pitch so those are all good so now the first mix you want to go into is going to be mix 5 and what we're going to do is get started with the elevator um, with the elevator setup in mix 5 so we want to make sure that the thrust nozzle the uh, thrust vectoring unit works uh, in unison with our elevon on our pitch. So I go into mix five and what I will do first, go to the normal setup, as you see here. Now, again, whatever you're mixing into is what goes first. So we want elevator to be the first thing that we uh, put here. So we want to work in the pitch. That's what we pick for elevator. And then since I have, I know where I plugged it in. Now this will be up to wherever uh, auxiliary port you plug in the uh, pitch of the thrust vectoring we know that it's plugged into aux 4 apologies aux 4 not aux 5 but aux 4 is where I have it plugged in and now that is uh, how we want to set up the mix and now you just got to play with your rates so I'm gonna start because I remember where we were I'm gonna go back on one side to minus 100 and then we can test it to see what happens so for here if I move Ah, you see? Now when I move up, remember we're only doing, when you do one side of the rate, you're only using half the stick. So when I move up, my thrust vectoring is in line with my, uh, is moving perfectly with how I want it to react to my, uh, to my elevons. So that is down, but right now it doesn't move in the up. So I just got to move over to the other side and give it the exact same minus 100. one over so now we're at 100 let's try it again there you go up and down so now my thrust vectoring is working perfectly in my in with my pitch of my elevons so now what you want to do also though make sure we want that working on a switch so if you see down here if your switch is on that means it's always going to be on so you might not want to fly like that. I wouldn't recommend leaving it on until you're more than comfortable with flying and thrust vectoring. You want a way to shut that off. So over here, we want to put that in onto our, uh, what we used was the H switch. So now when I put that on the H switch and I back out, when I move it without, we are here. When I flip the H switch, you can see I get it in the pitch. And what I will say is you do not want to turn on the trim on this mix. You do not want to be trimming your uh, thrust, uh, your thrust unit um, when you're going uh, at all. That's only going to affect you. The only things you want to change uh, when you trim are going to be any of your control surfaces, but I would not recommend trimming this. So this is a perfect setup for your pitch on the thrust vectoring unit. Now we're going to back out and let's do the yaw. So now we go, that was mix five, as you see here. Now we want to go to mix six. So now mix six is going to be, again, we want the yaw to work with the rudder. So right now when I move the rudder, I get nothing. So when I go to normal, so first things first, you want to find your rudder will be the first side of the mix. And then I know that I plugged in the yaw of the thrust vectoring into auxiliary one. Now auxiliary one is your is really your flap channel. So it's gonna be labeled flap in your um, DX9 or most of your spectrum transmitters, I would assume. But uh, if it's aux one, then, then use aux one if that's the case. So right now, that's how you set up the mix. And then we're gonna go into our rates. And I remember from the last one, cause I only just looked at it, that we need to go 100. So I will rack one to 100 and I will give it a shot. So rudder, there you go, it moves with the rudder to the left, 
but as you can see, it doesn't move to the right yet because I haven't put in a rate. But now say I did this wrong, you would know it was wrong. Say I rack this to minus. Let's just rack it up to like minus 42. When I move left, it works, but watch what happens when I move right. Up, oh, it starts moving back to the left. That's how the, uh, the both sides of that rate work. So you wanna make sure that um, you check whatever rate you do as you do it. And this is something you could play with. You might not want the thrust vectoring to move a full 100% on the servo with the rudder. That's something that I, I can't explain why you might not. Like maybe you only want 75% of the vectoring. Um, that's for people who are really um, getting deep involved in the thrust vectoring unit. For our purposes, we just want it to be full on 100% of each servo giving us full motion with our rudder. So you can see now my rudder is working, but what we wanna make sure we don't do is turn on the trim, leave that inhibited. But now we also want that to work on the switch. So I'm gonna click here and then you could just move the switch and it'll put it where it needs to be. And then just make sure you save that setting. And now when I move the rudder, nothing happens. But when I flip the H switch, everything happens. So now I've got everything on my thrust vectoring. And when I flip the switch, it goes right back to center. So I can quickly get out of thrust vectoring. So there you have it guys. As far as just setting up the thrust vectoring goes, you are now done. You will have six channels on this Gripen if you have it set up as I do, four for your canard mixes to your Elevons, and then these last two, which, which ended up being mix five and mix six for me, um, for your thrust vectoring. So it's really just two. But now, I wanna show you just briefly how we enjoyed flying it, how Justin enjoyed flying it the other day when we were, um, when we were out of the field. He wanted to add a little bit of rudder to both the yaw of the thrust vectoring unit and to the, uh, to the aileron, to his roll. Because when he was trying to high alpha, which is a lot, what a lot of guys wanna do um, with their thrust vectoring units, he was finding it a little, he wanted a little help with uh, correction, being able to correct himself um, by adding uh, a little bit of rudder to his roll. So we'll show you how to quickly do that. So you're gonna go into mix seven. And the first mix you're gonna do, we want to get the rudder working with the, uh, with the roll. So how do you work your roll? You wanna go into your aileron setting first, and then you wanna mix that into your rudder. So find rudder there. And now what he did, we just went with something small. We went with 10, he wanted 10%. So just a little bit of rudder. A lot of guys fly like this anyway, regardless of thrust vectoring or anything. Warbirds, I know a lot of guys love to add rudder to an aileron. This is a, a pretty standard mix. So you can do that here. <clears throat> and then he did not, we did not put this on a switch. He just wanted this to work fully. So when I roll left, you can see my rudder moves just a little bit. And when I roll right, my rudder moves just a little bit. So that's for the rudder. But then what he also wanted was to have that thrust vectoring nozzle also move in the yaw. All right, so we back out of here and now we're gonna go to what in my uh, transmitter is gonna be mix eight. So this will be the fourth mix that we do. And we are just trying to mix our, our yaw of our thrust vectoring into our roll. So again, you're gonna go to aileron. So find aileron first and then we know that our yaw servo on the thrust vectoring was plugged into our aux one, which is flap. So I find the flap. And what he did for his setup, the way he was flying, he racked this one up to 20% actually. He just liked the feeling. He started at 10% and thought he wanted a little more. So again, these are suggestions. These are not uh, final, but then he also put this on a switch. He didn't necessarily want, uh, he only wanted the thrust vectoring to the nozzle to move when the when he was in thrust vectoring he didn't want the nozzle to move when he wasn't in thrust vectoring so rudder to aileron mix is fine to not have on a switch but he wanted to make sure that he also put the roll with the thrust vectoring on the switch so you can see right now when i have the switch off he gets just the rudder moving with the roll then when he flips the switch you get the thrust vectoring nozzle and the roll as well and that's it guys, that's how uh, it works. So today we went over four mixes, your elevator to your aux four, which was the pitch in the thrust vectoring, your rudder to aux one, which was the flap for the thrust vectoring or the yaw of the thrust vectoring in the flap channel, and then two mixes in the roll to get your rudder 
and your thrust vectoring nozzle moving there. We just recommend it. Justin is the only person at this time to, to have flown the Gripen with thrust vectoring. So uh, this is what he did. And uh, just use that as a guide. So guys, that'll do it. Hopefully this uh, can help you guys out for setting up your thrust vectoring unit. It's not hard at all. Really fun. We had a lot of fun out at the field flying with the uh, thrust vectoring. I can't wait myself to get out there. We just haven't had the weather to do it. But um, if you use this video after that original canard mixing, you should be all uh, straight on how you're going to set up the mixes for your Yas 39 Gripen. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe, and definitely check the description of this video because we'll have links to the products, to Hobby Squawk Forms, to uh, all the information you're gonna need on the Yas 39 Gripen. And thanks so much for watching. See you later, guys.